Hello everybody, meteorologist Brian Ivey here. Thanks so much for watching. This is a nice look ahead at what the rest of the winter will likely bring across portions of Southern Canada and much of the United States for all different types of industries to be able to kind of get a heads up on what's going to happen. But first we need to kind of take a little bit of a look back at the pattern. So we've had this Arctic air, very short lived at times, but we're gonna have Canada get colder in the US really only once in a while. There will be major winter storms, but mostly we think minor. And if you're outside of the big storm track, you're probably not gonna see much big. And if you've already had a below average winter in terms of snowfall, and you're not going to get into an active track, it could be well below average. This is the La Nina here, well below average sea surface temperatures across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Notice all the cold air here with the darker blue start to change into lighter blue colors as it moves westward across portions of the Pacific. And now you get some of these, a little bit of orangish and yellow colors in here. So that is a sign that we already had our peak La Nina. This is the 500 millibar pattern or heights aloft around 18,000 feet that really drives where low and high pressures are. This is what we've seen from mid-November into mid-January. And this has been a persistent area of above average heights, a lot of high pressure. Right here, it's been an area of well below average heights, a lot of low pressure, a lot of cold air. Typically with the La Nina, these two are flip-flopped. It's reversed. So this has really changed what a normal La Nina pattern has been. And this pattern is likely going to flip a little bit. We'll show you that a little bit more on how that dominates the pattern. But with all of that high pressure blocking, we've put a ton of warm air in across much of Canada. This is extremely above average over the last couple months or so, bleeding down into portions of the Northern US as well. We've actually had cooler than average temperatures much farther to the South. It's kind of an unusual look for sure, especially when we have a lot of uh, stronger and more moderate La Ninas. This is snowfall totals throughout the whole season. We've had kind of a storm track that's went up throughout this area, a big snow drought across portions of the Western Ohio Valley and portions of Michigan as well. It's been active across portions of the West with a decent amount of moisture. And then just a couple big storms have produced a nice amount of snow into the interior Northeast, but it's been missing farther across the Canadian border where there's lake effect areas because we just haven't had the cold outbreak. So well below average snowfall here, Western Great Lakes as well. This is well below average snowfall, below average hair. Notice where all the warm air is. It's prevented some snow across portions of the Northern Plains as well. So we've actually had a more active period of snowfall with a couple of those systems out across the Central and Southern Plains. Precipitation overall has been this with the dominant track, but again, notice this hasn't been much snow because this is one of the snow drought areas. It's been pretty dry here across portions of the Deep South, dry across the West, different story across much of the East. But again, notice, that a lot of that was rain and not snow because we've had well above average precipitation near the I-95 corridor in the form of rain, but below average amounts of snow. So this is the polar vortex. It's that swirl of air near the North Pole, well, well, well aloft in the atmosphere. That spin energy has been dislodged a little bit and elongated, it's been stretched out. And that's what you can see here is kind of that stretching motion spin around as we continue to go into portions of February. That has definitely been a significant thing because it's allowed the polar vortex disruption to shove some very cold Arctic and polar air into portions of Europe, into portions of Russia and Asia, not too much Canada and the United States, hardly at all. Now we're kind of getting a little bit of polar vortex influence into early February, but it's much more tame compared to what other side of the globe has seen. So another look at kind of that pattern that I showed you a little bit ago has showed the dominant area of low pressure being set up here. That's forced the Pacific jet to be active where it's taking warm air and shoving it into portions of Canada and the United States. That's kept conditions much colder than average um, across portions near the South Pole. And as we take a look at this, this is at the 850 millibar level. Well, where's that? That's about 5,000 feet. So relatively low levels in the atmosphere. And this has been the pattern that we've seen, this rushing Pacific jet of low level air pushing up into portions of Canada and then trying to kind of descend back into the United States here a little bit. So you got this warm Pacific and if you're gonna blow that warm Pacific water in across the United States, think of it a little bit like a bathtub and the United States being like the rubber ducky in the bathtub. 
if the rubber ducky is cold when you put it in, but all the bath water is warm, it's going to warm it up. That's kind of a good scale to think about as far as the earth as a whole. So where are we going going forward? Well, we're going to set up a little bit more in the way of some cold air and low pressure area hair, which forces the blocking hair. Normally, when you have good blocking into this area, that pushes big cold air across the central and east United States. We're only going to see that in waves, though, because we still have some high pressure trying to build in across that area. More dominant cold air likely surging in like this. This is a La Nina signature, much more typical. So cold air comes in kind of like this and you just get some brief spouts here. And then with a area of a southeast ridge possibly developing, we get big warm shots here. And the pattern just wants to go warmer. So when we talk about a um, cold stretch, it's still not going to be quite as cold as what it could be in a overall colder pattern. So precipitation wise, what we're expecting is a little bit more typical of a La Nina. Not totally though, because we're going to be pretty dry across portions of the Pacific Northwest coming up. We're going to tap into a little bit more of kind of that panhandle hook action and Gulf low action. So this is kind of going to be your area of more typical rains. And if you get cold enough, some snows, I think where you're going to have enough cold air try to come in near where the big area of moisture is, is going to be around here. So that could be your snowy spot, but I don't think we're going to see a bunch of big East Coast storms. Temperatures for the rest of winter into the middle portions of March. It's going to be generally mild across the central and the eastern U.S. This should flip from a little bit cool to well above average, and it's going to be generally mild across much of the eastern half of the country, including the Great Lakes. Doesn't mean you can't get big winter storms at times. It's just not going to sit there and accumulate and add up little colder than average back across the Pacific Northwest into portions of the plains at times. But warmer air is probably going to overwhelm the cooler air overall. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was an informative video. As always here at NeoWeather, we provide detailed, specific weather updates customized to your location with impacts around your operation. Check us out and we'll be very happy to help you. Thank <laughs> you.